Hello gorgeous and welcome to another one of my videos based completely on a hypothetical question. <laughs> I started this as a throwaway comment but I am having so much fun. Incredibly niche alternate history, who knew that that was just gonna be my jam? So far I've posted three butterfly effect videos being the Nikki tutorials, James Charles and Jeffree Star butterfly effect videos and so far y'all seem to be absolutely loving them and so am I, so I'm gonna do more. <laughs> And a lot of requests on all of those videos has of course been the one, the only, Jacqueline Hill. Of course, as always, if there is a personal channel that you would like me to cover in one of these videos, please let me know down in the comments below. And I've had a few questions. No, it does not have to be beauty related. It could be any one. If I find it fascinating and I want to know how it would go, I'm going to be mapping it out and I'm going to be making a video for you. But for this video, I'm not gonna lie, she's a bit of an odd one. Disclaimer and content warning, in this video, as I've already specified, I will be outlining the butterfly effect of what if Jacqueline Hill never posted to YouTube. So in this video, I will have brief mentions of racism, but also brief mentions of her health weight loss journey that she is going on at the moment. If you find any of these topics potentially triggering, please proceed with caution or consider clicking off of the video altogether because at the end of the day, I do not want for my content to jeopardize your happiness and jeopardize your well-being. Full transparency before researching for this video, I didn't really watch Jaclyn Hill at all. The only thing I really knew about her was the moldy lipstick, so I am fairly indifferent to her as a creator and as a person. Meaning that I'm not really negative or positive, it just depends on the situation that she's in the middle of whether I will be negative or positive. And of course, as always, even though I say this in every single video, and even though I trust every single one of you, I still need to explicitly state that I do not promote, encourage, or endorse any kind of mean, negative, harassing, malicious behavior. These videos, all of my videos, are strictly for entertainment purposes only so I do not want for any kind of mean, negative, hateful, harassing, malicious behavior to go out there into the world because of something that I've said or on my behalf. We are of course allowed to keep it cheeky, we're allowed to keep it messy, and we're allowed to keep it fun but please keep it to this channel and this comment section only. With all of that said and done, let's get on to the butterfly effect of what if Jaclyn Hill never posted to YouTube. Jacqueline Hill originally started posting to YouTube in 2011, and by the looks of it, her first upload to YouTube was Kim Kardashian holiday makeup tutorial slash Jacqueline Hill, a very typical video for the 2011-2013 makeup tutorial period. By this I mean a contour tutorial or a Kim Kardashian makeup tutorial, and to be honest, over the years, Jacqueline Hill has absolutely perfected the full beat, nude, smoky eye, red or nude lip kind of look. Jacqueline's face is the only only evidence you need to support the concept of perfect practice makes perfect because hot diggity damn that is glorious. That is perfection. But what if Jaclyn Hill never started her YouTube journey? What if Jaclyn Hill never posted to YouTube? I was actually amazed by how much would and wouldn't happen if she never posted to YouTube because full transparency before researching this video I didn't really watch her. I of course knew of Jaclyn Hill and I knew her products, but I didn't watch her, I wasn't subscribed to her, and I didn't buy any of her products. The only reason I kind of know who she is is because of my history of the beauty community tea drama scandal series that I am still in the middle of. And because of that, unfortunately for Jaclyn, my base knowledge for her doesn't really paint her in the best light. But going back to the early days of her channel, going back to the early days of her content and watching that, I completely get it. I mean this is a compliment, but Jacqueline Hill is definitely a charming, magnetic weirdo. <laughs> She's definitely a professional and definitely has this endearing quality to her, but she is also just a fun oddball, which is why I think she was able to grow so fast on social media and why so much of her audience has been so loyal to her over the years. Because from my understanding, Jaclyn Hill was one of very few creators back then who was giving more than just a step-by-step -step guide as to how to do your makeup. She was also talking about herself and talking about her life as she applied her makeup and as she did the tutorial, which in turn created an in depth rapport with her audience, such as a strong parasocial relationship with her fans, that were willing to invest in her financially, emotionally, and with their time. I'm in no way saying that Jacqueline is a perfect person, I am just saying that 
I get it. I get why Jacqueline has grown as much as she has. I get why she has so many subscribers and I get why so many of her subscribers have been so loyal to her over the years. And really, I think that's where we get to the first piece of the Jacqueline Hill butterfly effect puzzle, because in all honesty, if you take Jacqueline Hill off of YouTube, I think the makeup community is kind of screwed. I mentioned this in my evolution of the makeup community video, but also in my Nikki tutorials butterfly effect video that I personally don't think there was a real sense of community in the makeup niche on YouTube until after the power of makeup was posted and that video united the niche into being a community. Between YouTube's origins in 2007 till 2015 there wasn't a sense of community there was just a makeup niche and the creators within it. I know that Jacqueline has definitely posted a lot of highly viewed videos in the time between her posting to YouTube and the power of makeup being posted but none of the videos she has posted in that timeline were specific specifically crucial, but her presence was. Because yes, Nikki did unite us into becoming a community, but there had to be something to unite. Take out Jacqueline, take out any of the OG makeup niche creators, and you severely slow down the trajectory of the makeup community. Just saying trajectory with the Australian accent is a special kind of hell to pronounce, and I am only assuming to hear. I apologize to everyone's ear holes. Ear holes? That's the word. <laughs> Ear holes is what I went for. Sure, let's see well, <laughs> how they're now. The power of makeup is the oven that brings all of the potential of the batter together into our brilliant dessert. Take out any of the OG makeup creators, take out Jacqueline Hill, and you are taking out the flour. And that is a really weird fucking cake. <laughs> In the early days of YouTube, in the early days of the makeup niche, every piece of influence that is contributed is crucial because these are the foundational years. You have to build a good foundation to be able to grow from it. And that doesn't even just go for the makeup niche, that goes for every single niche on YouTube and that goes for YouTube as a whole. Take PewDiePie off of the, oh my God, take PewDiePie, oh my God, take PewDiePie off of the internet. As I was saying, take Jacqueline Hill out of the equation, take Jacqueline Hill off of the internet, and there is approximately 2 million subscribers that didn't have her influence before the power of makeup dropped. Jacqueline is no different to anyone that I've discussed in a butterfly effect video so far and will talk about in the future. The biggest piece of each of these creators' butterfly effects is the effect that they will no longer have on their subscribers. When you take it out of context, yeah, the effect is going to look really small, but at the same time, I don't think I've ever seen 2 million dominoes the people that she will no longer teach, inspire, or influence. The people that will no longer know how to perfect the full glam natural beat. I know that glam and natural don't typically go hand in hand together, but somehow Jacqueline married that bitch together so well. I don't know what your opinion is of Jacqueline Hill, but credit where credit is due. I'm just like over and over and over and over. Chef's kiss. Like, I looks effortless. But where the Jaclyn Hill butterfly effect really starts to get fascinating to me is the products that she was a crucial part in producing because if Jaclyn Hill never posted the Kim Kardashian holiday makeup tutorial slash Jaclyn Hill video, then the world never would have known of the cult classic highlighter Champagne Pop. This highlighter is literally the little women of highlighters because no matter how many times it's adapted, no matter how many times it's remade, people still want the new edition. In 2015, Becca and Jacqueline Jacqueline Hill announced their first makeup collaboration. This was a first for Becca, but not for Jacqueline. Previously, she had collaborated with Gerard Cosmetics, but have you heard of Gerard Cosmetics? The makeup collaboration, of course, as I specified before, is the cult classic highlighter Champagne Pop. And this was an incredibly defining moment for Becca, Jacqueline, but also makeup influencers, influencers in general, and product collaborations. Because before this collaboration, the true potential for makeup influencer collaborations was insanely underestimated. Becca was a cosmetics company founded in 2001. And according to Aussie makeup artist founder Rebecca Maurice Williams, it was a cult favorite amongst the makeup industry, but according to some outsider opinions, it seemed to be more of a background moment in the makeup industry. That was until July 2nd of 2015 when the Becca and Jaclyn Hill Champagne Pop Highlighter launched and sold out 25,000 units in 20 minutes on the Sephora website. This was huge for 2015 because not only did it put Becca on the map, but it also showed the definite value in the platform and influence of makeup influencers. But the success of Champagne Pop did not stop here with a 
a holiday release of Champagne Pop, being the Champagne Glow 3-pan highlighter palette. And the success still didn't stop here with a 2016 evolution of Champagne Pop, being the Champagne Glow Face palette, which had two highlighters being Champagne Pop and Prosecco Pop, another Jaclyn Hill exclusive highlighter, and three blushes, but also a separate eyeshadow palette. But unfortunately, with the final launch, there was definitely some issues. From what I could find, Becca outsourced the manufacturing of the eyeshadow palette to a lab in China to cut production costs. And because of this, the quality between the PR palettes and the palettes that customers were buying and receiving was incredibly different. Because of all the backlash, Becca pulled the eyeshadow palettes from the launch so people could still purchase the face palette, just not the eyeshadow palette. And they specified that anyone that received the eyeshadow palette in pre-launch could return it for a full refund. And this is where it really starts to go Jacqueline downhill for Becca, because not only was there this issue with outsourcing, but there was also this issue where customers felt ripped off that some of these limited edition products were actually becoming permanent members of the Becca family. The reason being that some people were such fans of the Champagne Pop highlighter that they actually stocked up on product so that they never ran out of their favorite highlighter, but also some people bought when they didn't necessarily have the disposable income at the time in fear of missing out. But one product that Becca decided to make a permanent member of the Becca family was that of Prosecco Pop, the other highlighter developed in collaboration with Jaclyn Hill. In 2017, Trend Mood leaked that Becca was going to be making Prosecco Pop a permanent member of their family in all three of their formulas being pressed, cream and liquid. The issue was, was that Jaclyn was very quick to comment on this Instagram post, specifying that she had no idea that this was happening and Becca was doing this without her knowledge. And this made Becca look shady as shit. Because it was Champagne Pop that put Becca on the makeup industry map. It is what made them a household love name in the makeup industry. And Prosecco Pop was one of the highlighters made in collaboration with Jaclyn Hill. Prosecco Pop was a Jaclyn Hill exclusive highlighter with Becca. So by the sounds of it, every single university group project I've ever been a part of. <laughs> Because of this cosmetics betrayal, people started to turn their backs on Becca. People started to boycott Becca, especially fans of Jaclyn Hill, because by the sounds of it, their favorite makeup guru was being incredibly underestimated and incredibly used. And because of this, some fans were even feeling used by Becca. I'm trying to choose my words for what I want to say here really specifically, because as I will discuss later on in the video, Jaclyn definitely has some character consistency when it comes to makeup collaborations. So I personally don't entirely trust what Jacqueline has said when it comes to her collaboration with Becca. So in my personal opinion, I don't think we as an audience know the true depths of Jacqueline's participation and collaboration in her makeup collaborations and business relationship with Becca. I personally don't even think we have enough information to speculate the truth of this situation. I'm not saying that Jacqueline's guilty or Becca's guilty. I'm just saying that in this situation specifically, I don't know how to make a real judgment as to who was specifically in the wrong. And there is genuinely the possibility, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is the truth of it, that both parties were in the wrong. But it doesn't matter. The damage was already done for Becca. So much damage was already done that when the second anniversary of Champagne Pop was announced and launched with Jacqueline, Jacqueline's name on it, people weren't even seemingly interested in it. And this year, Becca actually announced that they would be shutting down in September. So after all of that context for this juicy, hot mess express of a saga with Jacqueline and Becca, we have three to four-ish primary players. The first, of course, being Jacqueline Hill. But if she never posted to YouTube, she's never getting this collaboration, so it doesn't really matter. So next. Secondly, this collaboration was one of the first makeup influencer collaborations. Of course, there was other ones before this, like the Michelle Farn SD. Lauder collaboration, but most, if not all, of the makeup influencer collaborations before this were nowhere near as impressive as this. This was a fabulous proof of concept when it came to makeup influencer makeup collaborations, because not only did they secure Becca as a household makeup industry name, but also they sold out 25,000 units in 20 minutes. Genuinely, what more could you want as a business? 25,000 units, 20 minutes, household name. That is... This is the there's the best outcome. <laughs> So this means that years after this collaboration had happened, there is the genuine possibilities that companies had in mind this highlight collaboration when it came to making their decisions on influencer collaborations, on makeup influencer collaborations. Take this moment out of the makeup industry's history and there is the genuine possibility that some influencer collaborations wouldn't have gone ahead because they still would have been seen as too risky because this proof of concept didn't exist. Thirdly, the smallest and still somehow the biggest is the audience or anyone who had purchased 
almost any of the evolutions of champagne pop. I've highlighted this in all of my butterfly effect videos so far, and I will continue to do it in every single one of my butterfly effect videos to come, of course, if you still want it. But if the person I am discussing is crucial in the production of a product, then if they never posted to YouTube, the product isn't going to exist. So this specific piece of the Jaclyn Hill butterfly effect isn't necessarily that highlighter wouldn't exist, but that Jaclyn Hill's highlighter wouldn't exist. All of the people that bought this highlighter, all of the people that bought any of the evolutions of this highlighter, all of the people that found out what highlighter was specifically because of this collaboration, all of the times that this highlighter or any of the products because of Champagne Pop were ever worn ever, and all of the videos that were made reviewing these products, wearing these products, all all of it gone. All of it ceases to exist without Jaclyn Hill being present on YouTube. And for some people, subscribers are gone. If you found a specific creator because they did a review of Champagne Pop, how else would you have found them? For each individual person that this affected minorly, it accumulates into this huge ripple effect, which is why I find the butterfly effect so fascinating and why I love mapping it out. Because if Jaclyn Hill never posted to YouTube, then this video never would have existed. But at the same time, Becca may never have made a name for themselves in the makeup industry. Wipe Jaclyn Hill off of the internet and this video doesn't exist, but also the company that sold for $200 million to Estee Lauder is kind of screwed without her. As I specified before, this highlighter put Becca on the map. But my thought process for this specifically is that I think that Becca would have still been looking to do some sort of makeup influencer collaboration. And depending on how successful that potential replacement collaboration was, Becca could still be in a similar position. But a lot of dominoes have to fall for this collaboration to go any similar kind of way. Of course, the influencer has to be willing to do the collab. The influencer has to have the right pull with their audience for the collab to go the same. The highlighter itself has to be appealing, has to be something that people want to buy. And according to all parties, Jacqueline had a very heavy role when it came to designing this product. So Champagne Pop just wouldn't be Champagne Pop without Jacqueline. So there is the genuine chance that the highlighter wouldn't have had this cult classic vibe that Champagne Pop does. And on top of that, the highlighter has to sell out in general and it has to sell out quite quickly, maybe not 20 minutes, but it still needs to sell out relatively quickly for it to still have the same amount of impact. And on top of all of that, people have to like the product. People have to enjoy using the product. If all of that went well, but the product was trash, then it doesn't matter. So quite a few crucial pieces and depending on the collaborating influencer, this will or won't happen. For example, the founder of Becca is Australian. So finding an Australian creator in 2014, 2015, when Champagne Pop was being developed, wasn't too hard. And Chloe Morello, I think fits the vibe of Becca perfectly. But even though Chloe is fabulous, she definitely at this point in time didn't have the same level of influence as Jacqueline. And even though a hypothetical collaboration between Chloe and Becca would have been super cute. I don't think it would have been as successful. I don't think it would have been selling 25,000 units in the space of 20 minutes like Jacqueline and Becca did. But you know that if someone like Zoella did the collaboration back in 2014, 2015, it would have been as successful and I dare say and confidently say would have been more successful than the Jacqueline Becca collaboration. But of course, we're never gonna know because this whole entire video is based on a hypothetical. Regardless of who this hypothetical potential replacement influencer is, if the collaboration didn't go as Stunningly, I highly doubt Becca would have made their presence known more than what it already was. Estee Lauder, I doubt would have purchased them because the product sales wouldn't have been glowing enough without Jacqueline. Estee Lauder bought Becca for allegedly $200 million. So their sales were fucking fantastic. Therefore, in my personal opinion, without Jacqueline and the success of the Champagne Pop highlighter collaboration and evolutions of this collaboration, Becca would have remained being the cute little background moment it had always been. Becca, of course, never would have had their downfall either, but at the same time, you can't fall if you never rose. And this is where it started to get even more fascinating for me because seemingly it wasn't just Becca that Jacqueline helped put on the makeup industry map. She also helped Morphe. Morphe was founded in 2008 and according to founders Chris and Linda Towell, Morphe didn't start embracing social media until about 2011. By the sounds of it in 2011, they were at a trade fair and they were networking with some smaller influencers at the time. And from there, they started growing their business, growing their network until they had the Morphe Babes empire we know today. 
today. By the looks of Jacqueline's channel, her business relationship with Morphe started around 2014, 2015 when she had a discount code, but also she had a few videos using some of their products, but also she had a makeup collaboration with them being the Jacqueline Favorites palette. From what I can tell, this is not an official collaboration like what I'm about to talk about. It is instead just a fun way to repackage existing products. At this point in time, Morphe was pretty new to the eye of the internet and was most known for their brushes. Morphe brushes, known for brushes. Funny how that works. <laughs> From my recollection, it kind of popped up out of nowhere and then all of a sudden all of the makeup gurus were like, here's my code for 10% off. It was in 2017 when Jacqueline and her business relationship with Morphe really started to take off with the Jacqueline Hill Morphe palette, the absolute staple piece for all makeup lovers. When it was first released, it was incredibly difficult to find any kind of negative criticism because it was just so loved, which is just one reason why this collaboration was huge at the time, because from my understanding at least, it was the first collaboration for Jacqueline Hill since the Becca saga, but also it seemed to be the first Morphe collaboration as well. And from my understanding, this really set up Morphe for future collaborations with future influencers. And on top of that, it sold for $39 USD, which isn't something to be mad about. In the grand scheme of things, this is pretty affordable, especially when you consider the fact that this edition of Champagne Pop was $38 USD. So what does this all mean for the Jacqueline Hill butterfly effect? wildly a lot, but also not. For Jacqueline, if she isn't posting to YouTube in the first place, she isn't getting this collaboration and she is going to be living a very extraordinary life in comparison. Emphasis on ordinary. For Morphe, possibly a controversial opinion, but I don't think they're screwed but I think they're kind of screwed. Hear me out. So in Jacqueline's announcement release launch video for this palette, she specified that on the original packaging that she shows in the video, those photos were taken two years ago, which means that Jacqueline and Morphe had been working on this palette since 2015, around the same time as Champagne Pop. As I said, the Champagne Pop collaboration was a brilliant proof of concept, so it doesn't surprise me that this is when the Jacqueline Hill Morphe palette started to be planned out. This means that I genuinely don't think there is anyone to take Jacqueline's place when it comes to the release of this palette in the same way, because who in 2015 had the same level of success and influence behind them? So the same level of success for this palette release I don't think is possible without Jacqueline, and therefore the trajectory of Morphe is severely slowed down as well as all future collaborations from Morphe. But that also means all future collaborations between Jacqueline and Morphe wouldn't exist either. That means the Vault Collection, that means the Volume 2 palette, that means the Divine Neutrals palette, that means the Brush collaboration, that also means the weird sunglasses moment that happened. <laughs> Each of these launches objectively would not happen without Jacqueline, which means that all of the finances that Morphe gained from sales, all of the influences that they gained from launches ceases to exist. So Morphe's trajectory is incredibly slowed down. But here is where I don't necessarily think they are screwed, because I definitely think at this point in time, in the timeline, they were looking to collaborate with a makeup influencer. And depending on how successful their first launch is with that replacement influencer, they would develop a very tight business relationship with this person. And then from then on, they would have multiple releases like they do with Jacqueline. One person that I definitely think is a promising consideration for a Jacqueline replacement in this hypothetical butterfly effect scenario is Manny MUA. Manny had been increasingly growing in popularity between 2015 and 2017 and was sitting around 2 million followers on YouTube and had become the first male Maybelline ambassador and already had a business relationship with Morphe. Use code Manny MUA for 10% off. <laughs> Can't do it with a straight face. <laughs> So potentially, Manny and Morphe could have started developing their palette collaboration in 2016 and still released around a similar date or just a bit later on in the year of 2017. So we definitely have a few of the same ingredients as Jacqueline. The only issue is, is that I cannot find a Manny MUA collaboration that was as successful as Champagne Pop, so I can't even begin to gauge how successful this potential collaboration would have been. But in my personal opinion, I just don't think it would have been as successful because watching as much Jacqueline content as I have now, doing as much research into Jacqueline as I have now. She just seems to be way better at selling herself and selling her products in comparison to Manny. This hypothetical situation still would have been a fabulous moment for Manny and for Morphe. I just don't think it would have been as successful as the Jacqueline Hill Morphe collaboration. Regardless of if it was Manny or not picked in this hypothetical reality, I still think that Morphe would have been looking to collaborate with an influencer. And if that collaboration was successful, they would have developed a very tight business relationship with that person 
person and they would have had multiple launches with that person, which in turn would help build that solid foundation for all future Morphe collaborations to come. So Morphe is screwed, but also not screwed. <laughs> but what we would be missing, of course, like I've said in every single one of my butterfly effect videos, and also already this one, is this video is gone. These videos are gone. These videos are gone. These views gone. These views gone. These potential subscriber changes gone. These potential dollars from these videos cease to exist. One person, huge ripple effect. But it isn't just the first impression videos. It isn't just the makeup tutorials. It isn't just the review videos. It is also the tea videos that are made on the Jaclyn Hill Morphe collaboration controversies. Because with each launch, each release, something has gone wrong to the point where sadly, something going wrong is just expected when it comes to a Jaclyn Hill launch. For the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Volume 1 palette, there was an issue covered in the most depth by Jen Love's reviews where some of the formulas were actually changed without any kind of announcement. The issue with this is, is that Carmine was actually added to a few of the shades. For those who don't know, Carmine is actually made from crushed up beetles, which means that the palette is no longer vegan. Makeup doesn't have to be vegan. The palette doesn't have to be vegan. The issue is, is that the original palette was advertised as vegan and because there was no announcement made, some people were possibly buying the palette not realizing that it's no longer vegan, which in my personal opinion is shitty. Morphe of course apologized, Jacqueline of course made a statement and people were very, very angry, but eventually people forgave-ish and forgot-ish. But also for the volume one palette, and I believe it was Stephanie Nicole that broke this news, the internet found out about Crown Cosmetics, a makeup company and manufacturer from Australia that allows for private labeling. Private labeling to be put incredibly simply is that some manufacturers allow for companies to put their own labeling, their own branding on their products and sell it as their own. Let's play a game of compare the pair. So we have the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Volume 1 collaboration palette that sells for $59 Australian, or we have the Crown Cosmetics 35 OMG palette that sells for $39 Australian. Do with that information what you like. As for the second collaboration, the Vault Collection, that had such horrific quality control issues that everything was recalled, redeveloped, and relaunched seemingly in six weeks. Seems a bit sus. Either way, the palettes were recalled, redeveloped, relaunched, much to the masses disappointment because the quality control issues were still there. <laughs> Oh, at least we can say character consistency, yeah? Once again, both parties made apologies and statements. Masses weren't happy, but at the same time, masses eventually forgave ish and forgot ish. The brush set. Oh boy. I feel as though this is where I've missed something. <laughs> because I can't find any abnormal critiques. Only reviews of what I would expect to see, like the brushes aren't as affordable as usual. Some people don't like the shapes of specific brushes and some brushes have fallout, which is pretty typical when it comes to brushes. The sunglasses moment is a bit of a weird one for me, is a bit of a petty one for me, but I'm just gonna put it in here anyway. Jacqueline collabed with company Quay to develop her sunglass collection. This is my formal apology to every single person watching this video, especially if you are Australian. Uh, I know how to pronounce key. I can't remember if I was doing this as a joke and it definitely isn't landing or if I really just had a brain fart. Either way, Hui is pronounced key. My bad. <laughs> and allegedly the CEO of Morphe was and or is the chairman of Quay. So when people were sick of Jacqueline Morphe collaborations, they instead got a Jacqueline Morphe adjacent collaboration. Some people were just upset and I understand, but at the same time, in the grand scheme of things, meh. Then for the Jaclyn Morphe Volume 2 palette, there was actually rumors that the palette was close to expiring before the palette even launched due to some codes that were lining up pretty concerningly. But at the same time, the palette was actually leaked before the palette was announced. Like I understand how it can happen and I understand-ish how it did happen. It's just one of those things of like, what? <laughs> to summarize the situation very, very briefly, but I have covered it in its entirety in one of my History of the Beauty Community Tease Drama Scandals videos, someone tried to buy the Volume 1 palette, instead received the Volume 2 palette, went to Twitter being like, what is this? And then Jacqueline was like, oh my gosh, I'm announcing something tomorrow, and put the color scheme on Snapchat or on Instagram, and everyone was like, oh, well, they line up. <laughs> 
So someone already had their hands on the palette before it was even announced. Someone wasn't doing their job. It's fine. Or maybe it was a PR stunt. I don't know what it is. I'm not saying that it was. I'm just saying that they, there's there's ways that it could have occurred. There's ways that I understand it could have occurred. It stupid. Either way. <laughs> Either way, when Jacqueline addressed the situation of the palette getting leaked, she seemed pretty upset by it, which, understandable. Uh, if you want to be the person to announce the thing that you've been working on for so long. But also at this point in time, people were getting quite annoyed that the only time she would ever post really was to sell something. Then we have the Divine Neutrals palette that was released September of this year and it was just very uninspired to the masses. So all in all, the Jacqueline Morphe business relationship has had some absolutely brilliant moments, but also a buffet of bad decisions. <laughs> Some of the bad decisions were made more than once as well, because when you have bad prawns, you just have more, right? <laughs> this chicken gave me food poisoning last time. Better give it another shot. <laughs> so all of the videos that never would have been made surrounding Jacqueline Hill and Morphe, and because of this, all of the views, subscribers, and finances that never would have existed, but also all of the fans and customers that never would have been disappointed. Because this is unfortunately something that I've found quite a lot throughout my research of the Jaclyn Hill butterfly effect. I think she has done some incredible work when it comes to the foundational years of YouTube in the makeup niche. I think she has done a lot when it comes to teaching people and inspiring people with her content. And as for her products, they look really, really fun. And when they land, they seem to be fabulous. But even with all of this good, I've seen an odd baseline from Jacqueline where she seems to have an inability to take on justified criticism. From my perspective, in my personal opinion, Jacqueline is brilliant at selling, but she is also fabulous at making misleading excuses until people forget. And because of this, seemingly the same mistakes are made continuously and new mistakes are scrutinized more so than another person's would be criticized for. For example, back in 2017, Jacqueline, her husband, Kathleen Lights, another YouTuber, and her husband were all hanging out at Jacqueline's. They were having some drinks and playing VR. Kathleen was playing some sort of zombie VR game and during her playing of this zombie VR game, she used the N word and unfortunately, for Kathleen. Jacqueline was snapchatting the whole entire thing and posted the part in which Kathleen said the n-word and in these snapchats you can hear Kathleen and her husband tell Jacqueline not to post it. Kathleen was of course heavily called out for what she had said in the video but at the same time Jacqueline was actually called out for posting the video in the first place. Majority of the criticism seemed to be that Jacqueline was creating unnecessary drama and also was being a shitty friend. Jacqueline's defense was that she was having a lot of fun, she got caught up in the moment, she didn't hear what Kathleen said and she she didn't hear Kathleen and her husband tell her not to post it, so she posted it. Butterfly effect of this situation is that we have one less piece of drama on the internet, we have one less person getting called out for their shitty behavior, and Kathleen Lights doesn't have this big red X on her permanent record. But I don't know who is telling the truth in this situation, and in all honesty, I really don't care, because if you don't want to get called out for racism, if you don't want to suffer the consequences of racist behavior, don't do racist shit. A 100% effective way to ensure that this situation never happened was just to not use the n-word. But in the case of Jacqueline, from what I understand, she wasn't being criticized for exposing her friend for using the n-word. Instead, she was criticized for not respecting the personal boundaries of her friend. Which I understand, but that is not the part of the Snapchat that I would have focused my judgment on. But I feel as though a lot of creators would have been given the benefit of the doubt in this situation because, and yes, I could be very naive with this, getting caught up in the moment is a reasonable excuse, for lack of a better phrasing. I've tried to explain this little thought process so many times. This is gonna be the one. This is gonna be, this is gonna be the moment where it all makes sense when it comes out of my mouth. If you don't expect a person to use that kind of language and you are caught up in the moment and you were caught up in the fun, I understand how them using that language wouldn't register because you're not expecting them to use it and you're enjoying yourself. So I can understand it to a certain extent and I can understand how a person at the same time wouldn't register the panic of someone just saying that language and not wanting you to post the video. I understand. Doesn't mean that I think it's okay. 
I just understand. But in a situation where I possibly naively think that a lot of creators would be given the benefit of the doubt, Jacqueline wasn't, and the internet figured out that the snap was actually up for about an hour after it was posted. So quite a lot more than a whoops, didn't register. Like, did it not register for a whole hour? And that's kind of my point. Both Jacqueline and Kathleen were shitty in this situation. For Kathleen, her critique has been expressed by more important voices than my own, and her apology is not for me to accept or deny. But for Jacqueline, she gave a reasonable excuse that someone as naive as I was initially would have just glossed over. But Jacqueline had had issues for years and years to come with an inability to take responsibility without making excuses or just being honest from the start. Sometimes it was taking more than one statement from Jacqueline to start getting to the truth, which is why, yes, in this situation, a lot of creators would have been given the benefit of the doubt. But for Jacqueline, the internet knows better. The internet knows with Jacqueline that you shouldn't be giving the benefit of the doubt initially because as character consistency suggests, you aren't going to be getting the whole truth. And this is where the character consistency really starts to come into focus. The big bitch. Lipstick gate. If you don't know what lipstick gate is, I'm honestly fascinated by how you managed to make that happen. But lucky you, I'm about to ruin it. Back May 24th, 2019, Jaclyn Hill posted the video INTRODUCING JACQUELINE COSMETICS! All caps. <laughs> In this video, she announced the first official launch of her makeup company being 20 nude lipsticks and people bought and people received what they bought and people received the lipsticks in their PR and so many things were wrong. Some people had little white fuzzies on their lipsticks, which looked like possibly hair or mold, which was super uncomfortable. There were some people that had watermarks on their lipsticks, which also kind of looked like mold, which also was super uncomfortable. Some people just had straight up shards of shit in their lipstick, which is very dangerous. Some people had bubbling all over the lipstick, which is not normal. And then some people just had their lipstick turn up fucking melted. My sister, who I love dearly, has straight up given me food poisoning before. I would take my chances with that dish again and use one of those lipsticks. And if the situation wasn't already bad enough, Jacqueline handled everything so poorly, I have seen two-year-olds potty train better. But I guess there was at least some sort of acknowledgement very recently. June 29th this year, Jacqueline actually made a video reacting to some of her most viewed videos and most controversial videos, and she specified that she was incredibly misguided and naive when it came to the launch of her cosmetics and she handled everything so poorly. So I guess there has been some character growth and she has acknowledged that what she did when it came to the backlash of these lipsticks just wasn't it. Either way, back to the trash handling. Jacqueline was very quick to defend her company when it came to this situation. Someone called out the white fuzzies and bubbling in their lipstick and Jacqueline specified something along the lines of, you can see that this lipstick is used and that happens when someone's lips are dry. Unsurprisingly, people were not very pleased of Jacqueline's initial defense of her company and were very vocal in expressing their opinions and Jacqueline backtracked quite quickly. So butterfly effect of this situation is that that person wouldn't have to be publicly embarrassed by Jacqueline for Jacqueline's fuck up. So that's a nice reality. Evidence allegedly came out that Jacqueline had been lying about FDA approval when it came to ingredients, components, and PPE used in the lab. And evidence allegedly came out that the lipsticks had been manufactured years ago. Jacqueline eventually posted a video trying to uh, clear the air, try to give explanations, and try to debunk some of the rumors that were going around, specifying that the white fuzzies were from the gloves that are not FDA approved, and also that the black dots that people can see in the the lipsticks are actually oxygen bubbles. From what I could tell, and I really hope that I'm wrong about this, but no official statement has been made since Jacqueline posted this video specifying what everything was when it came to the lipsticks. She just kind of posted the video, said that she was done with it, hopped off of the internet, came back eventually, and just never addressed anything ever again. From my perspective, and from watching Jacqueline's reaction to her viral videos video, reaction to her controversials video video, she had no idea what happened and she 
didn't know what to do, so she panicked, made that video without any kind of true 100% understanding of what was actually in those lipsticks. I do try my hardest to not try and get too frustrated with situations like this. I do try my hardest to not get too heated up with situations like this, but hot diggity fucking damn, this situation just throws me because no one forced Jacqueline to start a cosmetics company. <laughs> no one forced Jacqueline to make lipsticks. Her life did not depend on this. She actively chose this. She actively chose the role that she would play in the development of these lipsticks and the development of her cosmetics cosmetics line. She wanted it, she made it happen. So when all of this was announced, <laughs> when the lipsticks were launched, when the lipsticks were being sent out, we as an audience, we as consumers were expecting what we were promised. Or at least lipsticks that weren't fucked. Lipsticks that at least had the bare minimum quality control. Lipsticks that at least wouldn't cut open someone's mouth when they were trying to apply. So there was definitely on multiple occasions where Jacqueline must have negated responsibility. Whether it was intentional or not, it doesn't matter because she chose the responsibilities of starting a company. No one forced her to be a CEO, no one forced her to make lipsticks, and it sucks that Jacqueline bit off more than she could chew, but that isn't an excuse and she should have done better. It is just absolutely infuriating because if I wanted to open a restaurant, I know that part of the responsibilities is to make sure that my food that I'm charging people money for isn't gonna poison people. If it poisons people and all I say is, oh, sorry, the white fuzzies in the food is from the gloves, it's not good enough. Um, I know it was from years ago. It's just researching it again and then just seeing the lack of accountability taken really is infuriating. Either way, if Jacqueline Hill never posted to YouTube, she is not saving up the alleged $80,000 to start Jacqueline Cosmetics. And even if she did do that, she didn't have the audience for direct marketing that she does in this reality. So Jacqueline Cosmetics ceases to exist. And what does that really mean? For Jacqueline, it's just one less thing that she has to apologize for. So that's nice, I guess. <laughs> For consumers, people aren't being ripped off, people aren't being taken for a ride, and people's safety isn't being jeopardized to make a quick buck. All of these videos aren't created, so once again, views, subs, and finances are lost to certain creators. Just a huge moment for the beauty community in general is lost, which I personally don't see as a bad thing. But we would most likely lose the video, dear influencers. After this scandal dropped, and after Jacqueline made her My Lipsticks response video that was very poorly received, Marlena Stell, founder and CEO of Makeup Geek, posted a video called Dear Influencers that amassed 4.1 million views before she deleted it from what I can find. One crucial piece of Marlena's video was her perspective when it came to Lipstick Gate because one, Jacqueline and Marlena were friends and they were actually working on a collaboration together. Unfortunately, the product never launched for a few reasons and this was a huge financial hit on Marlena but also Makeup Geek. But most importantly, Marlena actually passed on one of her labs for Makeup Geek because of obvious sanitary issues when it came to a concealer launch that never happened. These sanitary issues included plastic hair and bubbling issues. And one of the lab workers even specified to Marlena that they were actually working on Jacqueline's lipsticks. If Lipstick Gate never happened, then I highly doubt that Marlena would be making the Dear Influencers video, come to think of it. <laughs> if Jacqueline never posted to YouTube, I highly doubt that she would be making the video in the first place. And thinking about it more, if Jacqueline never posted to YouTube, then the Jacqueline Makeup Geek collaboration wouldn't have fallen through and financially, Makeup Geek might be doing better. So there is this chance in Jacqueline's absence from the internet in this hypothetical reality that we are mapping out that Makeup Geek could financially be doing a lot better. But also this video, Dear Influencers, did bring a lot of eyes to Marlena's company at the same time. So it could definitely be a blessing and a curse for Makeup Geek. Because even though Marlena is seemingly trying to be the bigger and better person in this situation, from my perspective where I'm sitting, she still seems really bitter and really resentful. But at the same time, I would be a lot worse. <laughs> I'm not judging her for being bitter and resentful because that... That would be the baseline for me in that situation. But I hear a lot of you thinking this was just her first launch. Surely she had learned from that situation and surely her other launches after this one went a lot better, went swimmingly. Not having hair mold and shards in makeup is a bottom of the barrel standard and that means no, she also had issues with her highlighter collection launched in December of 2019. <laughs> 
There was quite a lot of criticism when it came to the tiered PR packaging. Big influencers got the whole entire collection, whereas micro influencers got maybe one item. Such an importance being placed on subscribers and views just really rubbed the masses the wrong way, especially after the absolute shit show of a launch when it came to her lipsticks. Once again, this is a simple effect that becomes a large ripple effect that I've mentioned time and time again. No product, no drama, no videos, no views, no subscribers, no finances. All of it ceases to exist. And since then, for every product of Jaclyn Cosmetics that she has released, I looked into it and I looked at her website and it looks cute, it looks nice, and she seems to only have the typical reviews, the typical critiques that every other makeup company has. So it does look like she has learned how to be a CEO and delegate better, but at the same time, not having mold, fuzzies, hairs, and shards of shit in your lipsticks is a bottom of the barrel standard. And even though just then, earlier in the video, and really throughout the video, I've been giving what some people would call some harsh criticism of Jacqueline's consistent character, I will say that by the looks of it, she is genuinely trying to become a better person. It genuinely looks like she is trying to better herself, and all forms of healthy growth is something that I admire and really respect. And an unfortunate thing when it comes comes to healthy growth is that sometimes there are infuriating backsteps for the individual. And yes, I say infuriating backsteps with a touch of personal experience. Recently, Jacqueline has been endeavoring into a health journey with the intention of eating better, exercising, and losing weight. Weight loss doesn't automatically mean healthy, but from what Jacqueline is saying on camera and what she is editing into her videos, she considers that losing weight for her to be a healthy option. I will say that Jacqueline gets torn apart online and she gets a lot of negative criticism, but a lot of this negative criticism I think is justified and fair. However, I've said this more than once and I will say it again, any criticism of her weight is absolute bullshit. Her weight did not make her a bad CEO. Her being a bad CEO made her a bad CEO. So seeing her response to these weight comments, I am not surprised that these comments are hitting her hard, but at times she is able to use this unjustified criticism as a shield for taking responsibility for the things that she should be taking responsibility ability for. Anyway, back to the health journey. Jacqueline has been documenting her health journey since September 14th of this year, and she's documented many a high high, but also many a tearful low as she has struggled to make better life decisions for herself. From my perspective, from an audience member's perspective, some of her changes seem to be very realistic changes and goals. But some, unfortunately, and unfortunately, unsurprisingly, because that's just how health journeys typically go, you make mistakes, and as infuriating as they are, you try and learn from them. But unfortunately and unsurprisingly, some seem to be setting Jacqueline up to fail, which is why the effect of the series is going to primarily be for Jacqueline, because it is her health journey. But also there are some people that are going to be inspired by hers and go on their own, and some people who could potentially learn what I subjectively consider to be negative characteristics of diet culture. If Jacqueline was to never post to YouTube, then there is the genuine possibility that she never would have had to have gone on this health journey in the first place. But at the same time, she wouldn't be inspiring hundreds of thousands of people with every post that she makes. Even though I know I have been quite critical of Jacqueline in this video, even though I did specify at the beginning of the video, I am quite indifferent. This is where I think the indifference comes in because it's really nice to see her try and be a better person. It is really nice to see her actively work towards being a better version of herself. A drive to really look after herself because this willingness to change may not 100% make amends to some people for her past shitty behavior. And yes, even unintentionally shitty behavior is still shitty. It's still growth, which yes, is a low standard, but at the same time, it's still better than what a lot of other people are doing. And I just hope that this health journey helps her evolve past all of the awful decisions that she has consistently made over the last few years. Ultimately, Jaclyn Hill has been a charming magnetic weirdo, and throughout the years she has definitely used this to her advantage to be one of, if not the most, sought-after makeup influencers. Her butterfly effect will of course be the millions of people that at one point in their lives she has influenced with her skills, teaching, recommendations, and endearing personality. Take her off of the internet and millions would lose key pieces 
pictures of their makeup collection, take her off of the internet, and millions possibly never would have learnt or perfected the smoky cat eye. There would be brands whose development is severely stunted in the absence of Jaclyn Hill, and influencer collaborations that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the Jaclyn Becker collaboration. But Jaclyn's magnetic personality is a blessing and a curse for her, because people love to love her, but people also love to hate her, and so many people on the internet benefit from Jaclyn's presence. These review videos, these first impression videos, these makeup tutorials made with Jaclyn products that cease to exist. So potentially critical videos for a specific creator, for example Jen Loves Reviews, I only found her because of her Jaclyn Hill Volume 1 palette formula comparison video, but also with all of her less than favourable moments being put under such harsh criticism and all of the videos that are made highlighting and discussing all of these less than favourable moments, there is once again the potential for critical videos of creators to be wiped out from the internet and therefore the trajectory of their online career is severely stunted. For example, if the reason that you found my channel is this video, How are we all doing? How are we all coping? Because even though I love these kinds of videos and I love mapping out everything, I know it's a lot to digest. <laughs> I might be unhinged, but I still am hinged enough to know- no, I do. There was something there, I don't know what it was. I tried though. <laughs> To, I do know that at the beginning of the video I specified that I was pretty indifferent to Jacqueline and I did get quite heated uh, throughout a lot of this video. Uh, <laughs> um, I would still say that I'm pretty indifferent to her. I see her trying to be a better person and I of course respect and admire that because it can be a really shit journey to go on. Um, it's a bitter pill to swallow and if you are willing to swallow that pill, good on you. Uh, so I respect that. Uh, she's made some really bad choices in the past and I will criticize her bad choices like I will with everyone else. I guess what gets me the most heated and I don't know why this makes me so angry, cowardice. Cowardice pisses me off. Um, sometimes it's okay to be a coward, but in certain situations you hurt people being a coward and I'm, 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 I'm not okay with that. Uh, for example, the moldy lipstick situation. I think she was a coward. So even though I don't have sound reasoning as to why I am indifferent, I still weirdly am pretty indifferent to her. If she does well in life, great. If she does bad in life, that sucks. Uh, if she hurts people in the process, that's when my indifference will probably turn to, wow, she's just like pretty trash, isn't she? <laughs> but at the moment that's not happening, so we're just saying it indifferent. Either way, I'm rambling. I just had another coffee, so I'm feeling a little bit pumped. Also, I'm at the end of the video, and I love getting to the end of the video because it means that I get to edit. Um, and then that means that I'm one step closer to being able to do a premiere with you guys, and I absolutely love premieres. Either way, please let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comments below because I want to know all of your thoughts and opinions. I want to know what you think. I want to know if you think that I'm wrong about something because that would be fascinating because that's just another alternate reality that we get to create together and also I want to know if I missed anything. <laughs> I know that I'll get comments about her divorce but from my personal perspective that's a personal thing and that didn't really have much of a butterfly effect to the internet that just had a butterfly effect to her and her now ex-husband so that I didn't include in this video because it it doesn't contribute to YouTube. But at the same time, maybe you disagree with this. So please let me know down in the comments below all of your thoughts and opinions, but also let me know what you want me to talk about next, whether it is a butterfly effect video. I am working on three-ish at the moment. Uh, none of them are beauty creators, which is wild. Let me know what you want me to talk about next, whether it is a butterfly effect video or just another video in general, doesn't have to be beauty related. Or maybe you just want to tell me in the comments below a fun fact about ravens. <laughs> I like animal fun facts. Uh, please let me know all the animal fun facts that you have. Someone told me in the comments that we still don't know how eels reproduce. That was mind blowing and I absolutely love it. So thank you to whoever that was and makeup application will be returning in my next video. I just needed to take a cheeky little break for myself today because apparently researching six-ish videos at the same time means that I get burnt out. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> and of course, thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it to this point of the video because everyone loves when I say this. I don't know why, but I have 
five hours and ten minutes worth of footage that I now have to edit down. <laughs> I'm getting pretty good at the long edits though. So thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it to here because what, we're probably at the 54 minute mark. Let's see how good my, my psychic powers are today. <laughs> And with all of that said and done, I just hope that you are having a fantastic day, fantastic week, fantastic month, fantastic year, and I hope that you are doing as fantastic as always. Bye everyone.